Okay, so it's game time in Ottawa. The mayor has declared a state of emergency because of the Freedom Convoy protesters. Uh, we also have police stealing diesel and fuel from protesters in the middle of winter, by the way, which is sort of like a human rights crime. I, I, how are they going to keep warm? You're going to let everybody freeze? And they're also sending in riot police into the convoy. So this is really heating up now. And this week, I think the police, well, you've already seen it. I'm going to show you the, the footage here. This is happening right now, like live, right now. This is Sunday night, February 6th, and it's happening right now. But this whole week, they're really starting to crack down on the protesters. I'm going to show you footage from the Zoom calls of the city council members in Ottawa of them talking about how they're the ones that organized the whole entire GoFundMe um, cancellation and, you know, the, the deletion of the convoy's uh, funds. They're the ones that organized all of this going on right now as well. Cutting off the fuel, cutting off the food supply to these Freedom Convoy protesters in Ottawa. Um, you can see here, riot police are being sent in. Men with guns. I'm guessing probably rubber bullets, but I don't know. Maybe real guns. I'm not really sure. You can see riot gear, all of this stuff. They're being marched in tonight, and they're really going to start cracking down uh, later tonight and tomorrow morning especially. Uh, I've gotten some reports that it's going to start tonight. Well, it's already it started tonight, but it's really going to start tomorrow morning starting at 10 a.m. They're really going to start trying to kick everybody out of there, but people need to hold their ground, and I would suggest... People need to stay. Hold your ground. Do not give in. You can see here some of these guys have their guns. I don't know if that's rubber bullets. I'm guessing it is. You have them saying that they're cutting off fuel and everything. Anybody assisting the protesters trying to bring in, bring in fuel will be charged, according to them, with illegal Things right uh, with an, uh, assisting an illegal activity. All of this is illegal on behalf of the, you know the authorities in, in Ottawa. What they're doing is illegal. So you can see here we have footage that just came out of them stealing protesters' fuel right out of their hands, essentially taking it from them. This is theft. They're the ones that are committing crimes. This, okay, this violates Section 8 of the Charter of Rights that reads, everybody has the right to secure, to be secure against unreasonable search and seizure. Without a search warrant, this is just theft. And now we know why they declared that state of emergency. Now we know why, because this, this I've always been against Emergency Powers Acts because it allows government and police to uh, have a loophole um, and not... Respect your individual liberties, whether you're in Canada or the U.S. They do things like this. Oh, it's a state of emergency. Therefore, you have no rights. It's just it's just like, especially now with COVID, you could just declare everything a state of emergency. But check this out. There's the fuel. They're taking it. Thieves. So, in fact, yes, they are taking fuel right away from people as they attempt to fuel their vehicles. And uh, people are surrounding the police, even though the police are actually being extremely calm and uh, cool about kind of everything, except for they're taking fuel, I guess. But uh, other than that, they're being they're being pretty respectful to everyone, considering they just got surrounded in like two seconds. So I would suggest, in the middle of winter in Canada. By the way, it's a very Canadian. I love how this whole entire trucker convoy thing is just peak Canadian. You know, in the middle of winter in Ottawa, like trucks i don't know i love the whole vibe behind it by the way i just think it's 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 peak canadian but this is a human rights violation 
stealing their fuel and their food and, and all of this stuff, telling anybody who assists them with fuel and all this stuff that they're criminals and cutting them off from their supplies in the middle of winter. How are they going to keep warm? You're going to let them freeze? Is that what this is about? See, this is borderline human rights crime. I mean, not only is it illegal, but it's just wrong. It's immoral. I mean, what? <laughs> so now we know, though, it kind of makes sense why they de they declared a state of emergency 12 hours ago in Ottawa. The mayor came out and did this so they would have the ability to come in and just steal everybody's fuel. These people are criminals. They're abusing the Emergency Powers Act. They're abusing it. Because from what I understand, I'm not an expert in Canadian law by any means, but, you know, they do have that Section 8 in the charter that they, the police can't do this unless it's an emergency, unless it's a state of emergency, I, I think. That's, that, that's what I think the law says, right? So that's why they did this. It's just abuse of power. Do, do, do you guys understand that? That like, They're not allowed to abuse their power like this. They can't just start declare. It's like the nuclear option, right? So, and it ain't right. So um, now we have people who are opposed to the protesters in Ottawa saying that they, debating whether or not they should take up arms. This is what I'm talking about, and this is totally acceptable, according to the establishment in the mainstream. You don't see the mainstream media calling these people terrorists, calling for violence against the protesters. So this is from a uh, Spaces um, meeting, an open forum on Ottawa for the residents uh, that are against the protesters. And this guy, this teacher in Ottawa, suggests that they should take up arms. And the organizer and the host of the meeting on Twitter here in Spaces is just like, yeah, doesn't even call it out. It's just appalling that these people can go to this type of rhetoric and nobody calls them out. And But if the, the pro-freedom people were to say anything like this, oh, they'd be uh, new Canada, Canada's new January 6th um, uh, protesters or something, which they were just, all they were doing was committing trespassing after the police let them in. So it's not even really trespassing. They didn't even do it. Like that whole thing is just a fraud in and of itself. But, you know, they're trying to compare them to like 9-11 terrorists, domestic terrorists. But these are the people talking about taking up arms against people whom they disagree with uh, that are that are just pro-freedom, that want people's rights to be respected. But, but I, I'm just a teacher and sometime politician. But what I want to know is what can I do? Because I think... There is a point in time where you take up arms. And I know that sounds aggressive, maybe. But I want to know, what can I do next? Because I'm not going to have my city overturned by people who have maybe, maybe the truckers, truckers uh, in initially, private or otherwise, maybe they had a point. But maybe the point has been made and piss off. And I'm sick of them. And I hate to be so plain spoken, but this is our town and you don't belong here. So just get lost. Um, I know that sounds very flippant, I suppose, but that's my feeling. No, I listen, I think, listen, I think, I think a lot of people feel that way. Obviously, I just want to underscore, I don't advocate and I know that you're not advocating this taking up arms. Uh, but I understand. He just said he. The guy just said, "When do we take up arms?" So, this type of rhetoric isn't even being called out. It's just being tolerated. Like it's. A, I get. Is is the new civil war going to start in Canada? That would be hilarious. It would be awful as well. Like this isn't acceptable by any means. Um, the left is talking about taking up arms against. The, I just can't even believe it. And and. If it were the other way around, you'd have the CBC in all of these uh, mainline outlets saying that these uh, these are like domestic terrorists. So, but you know, it's just a double standard, just like just like how we saw with 
uh, GoFundMe, you know, they were allowing the chop, the chaz, whatever you call it in 2020 that was blatantly violent, blatantly anti-police. Um, and they're trying to create an autonomous zone. It was 10 times worse, 10 times more uh, violent and destructive than this very, very peaceful pro-freedom convoy in, in Ottawa. And GoFundMe let that happen. But with the Ottawa situation, they deleted the GoFundMe. It was the same exact situation. In fact, it was way more peaceful. But still, at behest of Trudeau and the city municipal officials in Ottawa, they deleted it because it's big tech, Silicon Valley, GoFundMe colluding with government elitists and cosmopolitans in Ottawa to uh, disparage the working class, to oppress the working class. So here's a new clip that came from a Zoom call of Ottawa City officials talking about how they organized the whole thing, not only with the GoFundMe deletion, but now with stealing people's fuel. We have, through the efforts of Deputy Bell, Christian Hino, uh, the mayor and his staff, we've been able to shut down the GoFunding program. That's a temporary reprieve because the funds are already moving in different directions. We are now going after supply and, and fuel coming into the area through investigations and intelligence operations and interdictions, all of which are, were underway yesterday, fully underway today. There you go. We, I think that might have been the chief of police actually saying that. So so I'm not sure who that is. Uh, Peter Dolly? But either way. Obviously, they're, uh, you know, part of the city government. So this is what I'm talking about. This is tyranny. We are facing an oppressive regime in Canada, in the United States as well. And they are on the wrong side of history. And people need to stand their ground because they're standing in the right. The universe bends toward justice. And it's, it won't be long until these people are either, either have to hide the fact that they were supporting an oppressive regime or they're actually put away in some capacity for crimes against their fellow Canadians. And in the case of stealing fuel from people in the middle of winter in Canada and trying to cut off their fuel supply and, you know, food and stuff like this, this is borderline war crime, like, type of th stuff. I know that's a little bit exaggerative, but it's kind of true. Like, and th this is all being organized, right? This is not, <laughs> this is not, like, coincidence. This is, this is, like, a conspiracy between big tech city officials and the federal government in Canada to try to oppress the working class people who just are standing up for their rights. Like you would think the left would be in support of these truckers too, because I thought they were like pro Marxist, pro worker, like isn't worker uprising. And now the worker uprising happens. Many of them are just trying to, um, um, demonize the people there. It's, it's astounding. I've never seen anything like it, but uh, let me know what you think again. Hey, if you guys want to support, the trucker convoy in Canada, there's still give, send, go that you can contribute. And I'm actually going to refresh it. Look at 3.8 million already raised. This is now give, send, go because they deleted the GoFundMe. We got this going. Look at this. This is in a matter of a couple days now. I just made a video on it this morning and refreshed it. It was at 2.3 million. Now it's at 3.8 million. But with the police stealing all the supplies that they're getting, I don't know what's going to happen. I, maybe they can just sneak them in or something. We got to figure something out. We got to figure something out. So I'll keep everyone updated. Let me know what you think. It's been press. Also, so subscribe here on YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey. Follow me on Twitter and Gab. And if you want to contribute to my channel, I also have a Patreon and crypto addresses in the description below. Drop a comment and share the video. Give it a good thumbs up. It's been press. Keep your head up. Stay real and no fear.